My name is Justin Harkey and this is my house. I like to do things myself here. A um, good example, my dad and I built this house behind me and I keep honeybees. Uh, I installed this lawn two years ago. I did the, my own irrigation on it and today we're going to be working on a new section of the lawn where I grew it in from seed last year and we're going to be uh, sand leveling it. So we're in southern North Carolina and when I first built my house we started out growing fescue and it was just a lot of struggles, a lot of ups and downs. Some years were good, some years not so much. Uh, the spring and fall took a lot of time, uh, there was a lot of money and fungicides and so I wanted to try to get away from that and go to a less maintenance grass uh, such as this zoysia. So this zoysia I cut out about an inch, I don't apply any fungicides or chemicals to it. Uh, it's very tolerant, uh, you can actually drag your boot on it and it does not tear up at all. Uh, you can walk on it when it frosts, it doesn't leave a footprint. My daughter can get out here, she's about two years old, she can get out and run around on it, kick a ball on it and with the fescue it just uh, was more of a showpiece than it was a usable yard. So this is the yard that I planted two years ago and then over here on this side this is about 10,000 square foot. I planted this last May and so far the only thing I've done to it is mowed it. I aerated it one time and I've, um, not, I've only sprayed one post emergent herbicide on it. So the project we're going to be working on today is in this area. It's about 9,000 square feet and we're going to be spreading sand on it to help get the scalp marks out of it. And my end goal is to hopefully uh, reel mow it uh, and use some PGR to where I don't have to reel mow it quite as frequently. So on this initial scalp, uh, there may be a little bit of a dust and debris type cloud that you'll see. Some of it's dead material. I've also got some dirt along the road where people have been running off the road, so I've been trying to uh, fill that in with just red dirt. So we're going to go and get started today. We're going to hook up the mower and uh, I've got a 60 inch finish deck for my Ventrac and we're going to give this yard a quick mow. The reason we scalp is to get the canopy low enough to where the sand can actually fill in on the ground instead of sandwiching the turf in between the sand and the ground. Um, sometimes that'll lead to uh, future issues. So now we're going to run the aerovator over it. This is going to open up some holes in the ground for the sand to get down in and get intermixed with the clay. This is going to help with some drainage issues and water retention. It also gives the area. Uh, the roots area to expand into um, allows it to be more loose than like the hard pan clay. Uh, we're going to be running the aerovator without any weights on it because this is an irrigated uh, section of my yard so it tends to make pretty decent holes without any weights on it.
All right, so the next thing we're gonna do, uh, we've mowed, we've aerated. Now we're gonna spread this sand. This is 12 cubic yards and I've got 10,000 square feet. We may or may not use it all, uh, but probably going to. Um, we're gonna spread the sand out with the power bucket and just make piles. We'll try to spread it out a little bit with the bucket and, um, and then we'll be set up to drag the drag mat over it. update on the sand leveling project this is 9,000 square foot we put out about 12 yards of sand six days ago and around this drainage basin it was complete sand and we've got a lot of turf popping through it side of the roads looking good uh, haven't had anybody run off the roads yet so that's a bonus haven't had to straighten that out have not had to mow yet uh, I imagine it'd be, it'd probably be another week or so before I mow. If you were real mowing it, you'd already be out here mowing. But for me, I'm gonna cut it about an inch and a half tall. So uh, more than likely I won't be mowing for another week. Put 12 yards of sand on this 9,000 square feet and it leveled it up very nicely. So we finished up everything we're gonna do up front in terms of the sand leveling. Now we're in the uh, backyard, the side portion of it, and we're gonna be using the Ventrac power rake to help smooth up the grade. Uh, planning on planting zoysia seed back here in another month or so, and uh, we just need to get the grade established correctly. That way we eliminate all the high and low spots of the uh, yard, and it makes it for a more enjoyable mow and also helps with uh, dry areas or um, just the general overall health of the turf.
So that's pretty much gonna do it for the projects today. Um, still got a lot of grading left to do in the backyard. Got some more prep work to do before we bring in some dirt and do the final grade on it. In terms of the front yard, uh, we're gonna go back up there tomorrow and give the sand time to dry and then we're gonna finish uh, dragging it around with the rake. Try to get it as level as possible. And then um, going forward, uh, one good thing about owning the Ventrac is a lot of these projects that you start are multi-day projects. So it's kind of difficult to get a contractor out here or it can get expensive to get a contractor. So when you own the Ventrac, you kind of uh, work around your own schedule. And another good thing about uh, the Ventrac power unit itself is the amount of implements that you can get with it. They've been able to add in different opportunities in my landscape business, such as uh, leaf blowing, uh, aeration, seeding. So it's given me the opportunity to uh, expand into doing that as well and get more jobs. So I, the reason I invested in the Ventrac is because I, I'm, again, a DIY guy. I like to do stuff myself. And I also like the dependability of that I can come out and do it whenever I want to do it instead of trying to find somebody to do it, trying to make sure they do it correctly or up to my standards, and then uh, trying to get them here at a decent time. So in terms of my yard, I've got about 35,000 square feet here, and I've got Zoysia on 25,000 square feet, plan on doing the rest of it in the back. And I've personally done the entire yard um, I've had some grading done on the yard, but I've done the majority of the grading. I've done all the irrigation install. And if you were just to have that quoted out by a contractor, you may be up in the twenty dollars or $30,000 for sod, maybe $15,000 for irrigation. So if you're willing to come out here and do the work, you could justify owning the implements and the power unit and have all the same end results. And you'd have a tractor at the end of the day. So um, for me, it's been a fantastic investment and I can't speak more, uh, more more than good for the uh, VIN track itself. And I've used a lot of other uh, tractors in the past with a lot of other implements on it. And um, hands down, this one has the uh, higher level of detail and controllability than any of the other tractors that I've used. So for never running a stump grinder, what'd you think? That was sweet. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty easy learning curve other than whatever happened here. I think I just hit, maybe I hit it with my knee and it went in and float or something. But yeah, that, that really ate through it. You'd have a hard time getting a regular stump grinder in here. Mm -hmm. That's pretty nice because our daughter trips over that pretty much daily. <laughs> I also told me to paint it orange. I was like, I'm not painting anything orange. <laughs> <laughs>